Hi guys, welcome back to my War Games hobby channel. Look what I've just received in the post. Yep, yeah, you know I've been waiting for it. The Shakos and Bayonets supplement to the Muskets and Tomahawks rules. Now, you know how much I like them. Uh, I've played quite a few games now. Uh, ever since uh, this COVID thing started last year, I've been playing a lot of um, American War of Independence and some French and Indian Wars as well, which was in fact the first supplement that, that came out when the rules were released. A number of my friends uh, have been waiting for the Napoleonic version to come out because we've got a lot of Napoleonic troops. Well, I say we, I, I haven't, but I've, I've got a massive 15 mil Napoleonic army but skirmishing really is ideal, 28 mil size. And I've been, as you know, painting up some Austrians and some French, which you'll see here, um, in readiness for these rules, uh, the new supplement coming out. And I'm pleased to say, say they've just come in the post. Now, tonight I'm gonna have a game with a friend of mine, John, and it's gonna be a Zoom game, because we obviously still can't meet up uh, and have a game over a table. So we're going to have a game on Zoom tonight. I'll try and record it, but I've had a few technical issues trying to do that. So I might, might just, even if I can't record it properly, I'll just run through what happens. Because there are a few changes, uh, not so much, um, too much in the rules, uh, but just one or two things will make a difference. Uh, so I'm just going to run through now uh, some of the things in the, in the book that will be of interest. For example, um, I'm building French and Austrians, and if you look at the French, there are national sort of abilities, or national command abilities they're called, for each uh, nation. And the French, for example, have got uh, what's known as tactical superiority. You know that an important part of the game are these command points that, that you can use. And now the, the French tactical superiority means that for five points, you can move two units, move or charge two units. And this means that um, if they do, the charge action, for example, gets a, a plus one bonus to all reaction tests at the end of the hand-to-hand -hand combat which is going to be really useful for the french it's um it's one or two units you can move but the idea being is if you've got say you've got a unit of 10 and a unit of six you base the command points you use on on the larger size unit so a unit of 10 or more it's five points and then you 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 move the smaller unit as well for that as you know, normally in, in the normal set of rules, if you wanted to move a unit of that size, it would normally cost you three points anyway. So you get it slightly cheaper. In fact, if you've got a, if you've got a very large unit, of 12 figures or more, it would cost you four points in the normal rules. But with these now for five points, you could use, you can move that, a large unit of more than 10 and a smaller unit as well. So that's going to be quite useful. As I say, it says here, the cost of the ability depends on the number of figures in the larger of the two units chosen. If a single unit is chosen, it's the figures, that, it's the figures in that unit that determine the cost. The Austrians have what's known as outdated tactics. They were a little bit behind the French, tactically wise. For three points, the ability allows you to resolve an action, not, not unlike the French, which is a move or charge, but... The Austrians can do any action for a unit composed of at least 12 figures. So you have to really have big Austrian units. And in fact, historically that is correct because the traditionally the Austrian units were a much larger size than the French. So if you've got a unit of at least 12 figures, you can move it for three points instead of four on, on the in, in the rule book. But interesting enough, for five points, you can resolve an action with two units containing at least 12 figures each so normally of course you'd only move one unit at a time which would cost you that uh, four points but for five points you can move two units or activate two units but of course they have to make sure they have 12 units or more if they get down to 11 they won't get that so they use that sort of national characteristic if you like which is why the game that I'm playing, the Austrians are going to be units of 16, which is the largest size they can be. So it allows for a few losses to come off them before they lose that ability. 
but the limit uh, for French units is, is 12. They can, that's the maximum size they can be. So in this game, I'm going to play tonight with John. Um, the French, are in, I'm keeping them in units of eight and the, the Austrians are going to be twice as big. They're going to be 16s, but we're going to have the same amount of figures on the table, but the unit organization is going to be different. The skirmishes, as you can see from the, you can see here, these are the figures I'm using. Um, we're going to have exactly the same size. So 32 infantry, line infantry that is, and 12, that's two units of six skirmishers. And I'm using three officers on each side as well. We're going to keep this game basic. It's not going to be any cavalry or artillery involved. In fact, I haven't got any cavalry yet. I'm in the middle of painting some. I have got some artillery, but we decided for our first game we'd keep it simple. And here's the army list, in fact. You can see uh, I've added another officer onto that list, actually, but it's the same for both sides. So it comes to about 500 points. So it's a reasonably sized game. The other thing that uh, of note is that the specialised force, uh, um, the part that covers what sort of force you have, they're both the same, in fact, the Austrians and the French, the game we're doing, are, in fact, both um, line infantry. That's their sort of trait, if you like, their talent is line infantry. So each unit, um, f units of line infantry formed in a line within six inches of an officer add plus two to their movement distance. If said move allows them to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, with the enemy. Um, so that's fine. So troops in line can do that. I'm a bit surprised that columns can't do it as well, because I think the French at that period were more often used to being columns. But anyway, it says line, so we'll stick to that. So looking at the, um, the different uh, armies, there's the, um, there's the introduction part to uh, the French army lists. And you can see there the, the infantry, a uh, unit of eight fusiliers, um, which costs 80 points, and you can have up to additional four figures at 10 points a figure. And there are options that they can have. They can be unmotivated, um, so they gain the idle trait if you want that. Constrips are 20 points cheaper. Their discipline now becomes recruit rather than trained. Um, they, they can be a veteran, which is grizzled. Uh, and they can be uh, chasseurs, so that will be uh, light infantry. So they will replace the close order trait um, with the lights trait, which would mean scouts. They get the scout uh, advantage. So there's all the different sort of troop types, as you imagine a French army would get. I like the little, um, I like the dragoons, for example, where they can fight dismounted. That's minus 30 points, because often French cavalry, when there was a lack of horses around, would would fight dismounted. Not often, but they're, they're, they're certainly are not uncommon for that for them to do that counted as uh, just as infantry uh, the austrian list as you can see um which is what i'm going to be using tonight that's the other army that i'm painting up it's much the same the uh the fusiliers again uh eight figures for 80 points and you can have up to eight additional figures at 10 points so they cost the same a figure and in fact the stats are exactly the same as well except if you have hungarian they're 20 points less their discipline becomes recruit they obviously weren't as um, well organized or well disciplined as the as the german because the austrian army was mainly because it was such a variety of, of languages in fact in the austrian empire then was quite large and um there were basically two types of troops or three types of troops really there was the german troops from the german sort of part of the austrian empire and they were considered pretty good troops and then the, the hungarians which had the light blue trousers i don't know whether you've you've seen them but they are minor minor german because they got the white trousers but the if you did them hungarian they would have the light blue trousers and then also there was grenzers and these were the the troops that were raised in from croatia slovenia transylvania etc and they were very effective as skirmishes uh, there's obviously the usual sort of types of cavalry that you can use as well. I'm doing um, Ulans uh, for my cavalry uh, because in fact the, the unit I'm, I'm painting up is based on the unit that was at the Battle of Wagra and the, the, the division that they were in, the, the supporting cavalry were Ulans so I'm sticking to that, I'm trying to stick historically correctly to what 
uh, would be supporting those infantry. As it happens for the French, I'm painting up some cavalry as well, and they're going to be line lancers. I might add some more cavalry later. I might, if I do it, I'll be chasseurs or, or, or hussars. I'm not sure I'll do heavy cavalry. Um, I think they would tend to be kept uh, back. They wouldn't be in a skirmish game. You can, you can use them if you want. They are in the book. Um, it may be tempting to have dragoons, possibly. I'm not sure about cuirassiers, though. I'm not sure they'd be out skirmishing. Anyway, that's, that's up to you. The other nationalities in the books, obviously, um, the British are there, as you would expect. Um, the Prussians, the Spanish army. It's a nice variety of troops in, in the Spanish lists. In fact, a very good friend of mine, Graham, uh, has some Spanish and he's got some uh, guerrillas which he likes to use. I can see he can have militia, he can have guerrillas. Yeah, so it'd be nice to be able to use those. And then also there's the, there's a Russian, there's a huge uh, selection of Russian troops that you can use. It's very tempting, tempting to do that. But they can have grenadiers, uh, they can have Jaegers, guard regiments as well. Um, they can have again the, the same sort of cavalry that most of the nations have: hussars, uhlans, or lancers, mounted jagers. But they can also have um, dragoons of the guard, cuirassiers, bashkirs, or kalmuks, whatever they are. They're um, they're basically nomadic horsemen, which is a nice touch. Uh, they can have um, obviously cossacks. If you like, have lots and lots of cossacks. You can even have opolcheni. They were the sort of Russian militia. I've got some in my 15 mil half. They're pretty useless, but they're, they're nice there to have in, in, in reserve and use if you get desperate. And you can have partisans and volunteers. So they, they really are quite a wide variety of troops in the Russian list. So that'd be interesting to see. Right towards the back of the book, um, we've got some really nice looking scenarios as well. Uh, we're not going to do that tonight. We're just going to use uh, one of the scenarios from the main rule book because I want to keep it simple. But one of the scenarios is called the convoy, and it's basically a, a, a escorting a convoy through uh, enemy territory. And there seems to be a wide choice of different type of things you can be convoying, uh, and that goes three pages long. So however many times you play that convoy uh, scenario, I think it'll be quite different each time you, you go to use it, because you'd have to dice to see what... For example, um, what the weather's like, what actually is in the convoy. Yeah, th th there's lots of different options there which you dice for. You don't exactly know what's going to what you're going to be happening in that battle. So that's going to be one we're going to be playing a lot of, I think. You can be escorting prisoners, for example, um, gold or precious material, precious goods, a dignitary. So it's really it looks really interesting. There's another game, Final Hour. Um, which again, you, you roll for weather um, as to whether there's violent winds or, or whether it's twilight. Obviously, um, it varies considerably as to then what, how the battle would go. And then there's an assault game scenario. And there's finally Heart of the uh, in Inferno. So a wide variety of um, scenarios there. The random events at the, at the back of the book, incidentally, um, are different to the ones in the uh, the first supplement so there we go so i'm going to play this game and um i'm going to report back how it went and how those especially how those national sort of characteristics how they came out in the game so here's the game all set up let me just explain what's going to happen in this game you can see the deployment points there's the french the, their line infantry are coming in over on the left there and their light infantry skirmishers or their volticurs are coming in on the marsh area. There's a small wood in the middle, which is an objective. There's another objective quite near there to the French. Another objective here quite near to the Austrians. And the Austrian deployment points are in the, the top corner coming through that wood and or partially through that wood. And the rest of the infantry are coming in on, on, the, on the eastern side there. and there's a small field there i'm not slowing anything down for that that's actually just what i'm going to use to roll dice in so it's not a very high wall at all so that's really just there to look good but it's not going to slow down the austrians at all there's a larger wood there and there's just a rocky ground in that corner and um 
another small hill there. So I've kept the terrain quite straightforward for, for, for today's game. So I'm just going to do these. Uh, we're going to start the game and then we're going to report back how things have gone. OK, so here's the first move that we did. Incidentally, I did try to record this, but it wouldn't work on Zoom. So I'm just going to run through uh, exactly what happened in the game. So here's the first couple of moves uh, that most units have made. The um, French had much better uh, choice of cards coming out, uh, so they were able to move up. You can see the 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 the, 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 the Gures have already captured the the objective in the middle. They've managed to get into that wood, and over here the the line infantry are starting to spread out, and they they did actually open fire over here. I haven't put smoke down because I'm just explaining what happened. But these open fire onto the skirmishers and caused a casualty and, and they had to fall back. And in the wood, the Austrians moved slightly to get out of volley fire of these guys. So they've just moved out of the way. Over here, the, the Austrians have just deployed into a line, a massive line, and they've moved forward. So it's sort of fairly early on. The first casualty was, was one Austrian from volley fire from that that unit just here and they've also captured the second objective as well the Austrians have been a bit slower getting into the battle but they're now starting to move up so I'll report back in a minute the next move okay so quite a bit's happened uh, now now what happened here was that the let's just put this camera down a bit and I'll explain what's happened over this side first the French volunteers that were in in this wood at this point They'd captured the objective, and as the Austrians moved forward, uh, they all fired onto this unit here, the unit of 16. And they caused a massive eight, amount, eight casualties. They really did hit them badly. The dice roll was amazing. They got, um, out of 12 shots, I mean, they were very close range, um, they got 10 hits, and eight of those turned out to cause casualties. Now this meant that the, the Austrians had to do a morale test and they did, they did fall back because they were here but they fell back. But that's all they got because the unit is still eight strong so they're, and they're still in formation. Um, so they were able to uh, take that sort of eight losses and st stay there. If that had been the French, that unit would have been wiped out. Um, or another unit would have been down to less than six men and it would have been difficult to... Well, they wouldn't have stayed in formation and their morale test would have been even worse. But the French, the fact they're in such large units, were able to withstand that battering they took from the, from the Voltigeurs. They're still in the game, but only half the size they were. And then the, the Voltigeurs decided they, they were, these, these were getting in rather close. So they fell back through the wood. and then now, But they can still be seen. This is, I think, in, in a minute you'll see. Um, they, they could have a problem here because these guys can still do volley fire and it doesn't matter that um, they can only see a few men. The, the volley fire will affect anybody in there along that sort of line. Okay. In the top area here where the Austrians uh, were in the wood, um, they've come back into the wood here. They did cause a casualty. The Austrian skirmishers here fired on the other French unit that were coming up on the left and caused three casualties. So they are now longer in, in um, formation. They've had to spread out a little bit more. So the French have lost four figures over here. The Austrians haven't lost any more yet. And the other infantry, the French infantry, uh, are slowly moving up. So that's where we are at the moment. Right, so this is the last part of the game I'm going to tell you about. The, the Austrians here did move up and they did fire volley fire as, they, as, as you would expect them to do on the skirmishes that were in the woods here and this unit. Uh, this unit took a casualty and fell back. The two skirmish units here, although they only took one casualty, um, they, did, they did both did a very poor reaction test and they both fled. They have since recovered and turned around to face the wood again, but uh, they, they did fall back. Um, the other Austrian uh, unit has moved up. Uh, well, these Austrians incidentally took a figure as well, but the Austrians are pushing up, but they haven't yet reached this objective. Over in the wood, quite a bit happened in there. Um, the French charged uh, one of the skirmish, Austrian skirmish units in the wood, 
and wiped them out completely although they did take uh, quite heavy casualties themselves and in fact then they were counter-attacked by the other Austrians that were in the wood and the sole survivor of that unit is here they had to fall back so he's the only survivor of that unit of eight the other unit of uh, still got five left here are still in the game but those Austrians are not going to do anything there there's only four of them left with an officer and they're not going to be able to do much against the, the mass of French troops that are still in that sort of area. Uh, and at that point, in fact, the game did end because we agreed that we'd only play until 10 o'clock. All this had taken a couple of hours of play in actual fact. We had a few hold-ups due to technical issues, but the game at this point ended because we did agree we'd stop at 10 o'clock. The Austrians didn't take the objective here. They were close to taking it. We had a rule that once, the, once you've taken an objective, you could leave it again. It would stay, still stay as part of your um, one of the things you captured. So the French captured this ob ob objective. And although they're no longer occupied, it still counts as theirs. The Austrians didn't get there quick enough to take it back again. The total casualties, as you can see, um, the Austrians lost 17 total. That's eight uh, skirmishers and nine line infantry, eight of which came from that volley fire over here, which from that unit. And the French uh, have lost 12 uh, troops altogether. Only one skirmisher, only one volteur, should I say. The rest of them were infantry. But the French have taken less casualties and they hold two of the three objectives. So at that point, um, we had to call it a day because we ran out of time. The uh, national command abilities were useful more for the Austrians because that, that sort of five points for moving two units of um, 12 or more um, figures um, is quite useful. Although <laughs> one of the Austrians units were down to eight so they wouldn't have benefited from that anyway. Uh, the French ones didn't use theirs as much. Um, because it only, you could only use it for form the units in line or column um, and they didn't really make use of that so I think uh, it, it will have its, uh, there, there will be a point where it will be useful especially if they've got um, a couple of units near enemy that are, that want to charge then they can, you know, four or five points, you charge two quite large units at the same time at two different targets so I think that's going to be useful as well but the, the French had the day, so that the Austrians were just a bit slow getting into the battle. Uh, they didn't get the cards they wanted. Incidentally, the um, the command points, there we are, these are the command chips I use. I'll put them on the flags to remember which one's which, and there's the deck of cards over there. Because we did the game on Zoom, we can't use the normal three cards per player, and then you choose which one you have. We were literally just, turn this round, we were literally just turning over so it's a it's a french turn and whatever card comes up then that would have been for example the austrians would have moved but then the french would have got a command point then because it's um you know an austrian move and then the next turn it would be the austrians go and you turn over a card and of course they would have then moved anyway because it is their turn and that, that seems, for online games, seems to work quite well. You just have to turn over whose, whose go it is and say that's the French move anyway. And yes, they can move their light infantry. And now it's the Austrian turn and turn over. But in fact, the French, uh, in fact, it's the French morale card. But they would get a command point for that because they're using their opposition's card. And they gain the slight advantage of doing that, which helps build the command points up quite well and uh, they were used quite a bit so yeah it was a good fun good game it's lovely to use uh, the, a set of rules that I particularly like for a different period and the one advantage with me is going to be that um, I've got about half a dozen mates that have all got large 28 mil various Napoleonic armies so we can all start to sort of use these rules they never use more now because not many people have got American War of Independence and French and Indian Wars. The few have, but more have got Napoleonic. So we've been really looking forward to this supplement. It's really laid out well. I do like the army lists. I've only had a little look through at the moment, but they do look um, they do look fun, and the rules only vary a little bit um, on the main rule book. There's a few new traits. There's fearless. 
um, which means the unit with that trait needs to take a reaction test. It does not roll a dice. The result is always a nine, so that's going to be pretty useful. I don't know what that costs, but that will be in there somewhere. Um, they're swordsmen, so if you've got uh, a unit of hussars, especially um, uh, if it's a guard unit, you want to make them swordsmen. So they, they lose their, their carbine, but they, 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 they can re-roll any attack dice that does not score a hit. So that's going to be very useful. Uh, there's impetuous and there's gunners as well. And there's also a new weapon, the Jager rifle, which is no different to the, to the long rifle in the normal game anyway. So there we go, guys. That's the first game I've had. It was only a quick experiment to see how things went and um, it was good fun. Uh, if it had a bit more time, I don't know whether the Austrians, they certainly would have captured that command point, but whether the the French coming up and the, the Von de Gers are still very strong, I think they probably would have um, won anyway had the game carried on a bit longer. Losing eight to that Von de Gers um, fire early on in the game was really painful for the Austrians. It's just a luck of the dice, that's how it went. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of a taster of what the game should, these new, the new supplement will work like. Uh, we enjoyed it, it's only our first game. I'm sure we'll have a few more um, in, in the next few months. And especially when we can start fighting over a table rather than do it on Zoom. Right, in the meantime, uh, keep well, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.